Hi there, my name is Dominic. Nine years ago, I took part in a kidney exchange program. I donated one of my kidneys to my ailing dad, Cosmo. He was about 70, 71 years old at the time. Uh, he was suffering from a form of kidney disease. And um, um, it's pretty much the best thing I've ever done in my life. Well, uh, a little bit about my dad, Cosmo. Uh, he did everything for my family. He uh, sacrificed a lot in his life to make sure that we were taken care of. We meaning uh, my mom, uh, my older brother, and myself. We were a family of four. Uh, he, um, he was a, a great person. You know, not only a father, he was a great, humble, sweet person. And when the opportunity came up to help out, to do my part, to do something, um, I, I didn't blink. I didn't even think about it once. I just wanted to do it. Now, I donated my kidney to my dad, but I, uh, it wasn't a direct donation. Uh, um, we weren't blood compatible. So we had to take part in a program called the Living Kidney Donor Paired Exchange Program. Basically, we were paired up with families in similar situations in other parts of the country, and we sort of made a trade. For example, I gave one of my kidneys to a, uh, a woman in Ottawa, and an Ottawa's relative gave it to somebody in person, my dad. So we were three families uh, who couldn't make a direct donation, and therefore we, uh, again, took part in a, a unique um, exchange program. Um, I, I, it, it took a lot of coordination, took a lot of work. It wasn't easy uh, to deal with the emotions, I won't lie to you. Uh, I, I did have some uh, difficulty with all this, but um, knowing that I was helping my dad, uh, listen, I, you put all that aside. Um, you, 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 you do whatever you have to do. Um, it, it's, it was very, very hard to see a strong, uh, vibrant individual who had so much to live for, who always talked about taking his next vacation, um, you know, talked about riding his bike even in his seventies. Um, to see a person like that become so weak was um, was very difficult, and I'll be honest, it's still very difficult today. Um, so, it was uh, it was something that I uh, didn't blink at, didn't even think about once, and I'm glad I did it. You know, in a in a perfect world. We, um, I, or my family didn't, wouldn't want to do this. You know, uh, it's not that we didn't want to, it's just in a perfect world. My dad would have had a need. There would have been a registry. He would have been a fit for somebody's kidney and the operation would have done and would have saved my, our family a lot of stress and a lot of, um, a lot of emotions. Um, but, um, uh, we did it because we loved him. We did it because this is probably the only way we can show our love to him. He was a uh, he was a very proud man. Never wanted to bother anybody. Uh, I guess you can call him an old fashioned, uh, you know, stubborn uh, uh, Italian Canadian. Um, but regardless, uh, he was our everything, and we um, we didn't blink. We didn't think about it. We just did it. I also want to mention that uh, my dad passed away about seven years after the operation. Um, I want to mention this as a tail end of the story because um, I, I have no regrets. I don't um, think twice about what I did. I would do it again tomorrow if I could. Uh, for us, my son, for my daughter, for any other family member. Um, it's sad that he's not here with us, but uh, I'm glad I did this. It was the best thing in my life, the best thing I've ever done in my life. Um, so the surgery was done in August 2012, uh, uh, the, the part where I was giving my kidney to uh, uh, another person. Um, Look, there, there were a lot of questions around that time. Should you do this? Um, are you taking a big risk? Uh, will, are you 
unknowingly shortening your life? Are you are you just creating problems for yourself? Um, listen, I, I did a lot of research. I asked those questions <laughs> thousands of times, hundreds of times to my local doctors, my nephrologists, uh, who and obviously I did my Google searches and all that. And I was reassured over and over again that um, that this wasn't dangerous. Uh, there could be complications, but it's very doable and very safe. And uh, listen, I'm the proof. Um, I, I, the surgery was done in 2012. I'm recording this in 2021. Nine years later, I'm 100% healthy. I've never had any problems, any any issues. So if you're watching this and that's your main question, hey, okay, you know, could I get problems? Can I get issues 10 years later, et cetera, et cetera? Um, the short answer is you could, but uh, in my case, I haven't had one issue at all. I haven't had one problem. And um, so let that, hopefully that reassures you that uh, this is uh, a safe procedure and this is something you should seriously consider. And uh, don't worry. Don't worry, I, I'm living proof that um, this is doable and you're in good hands. I'll be honest, there was a scary moment. Um, it was the morning of the operation. You know, as part of the uh, exchange program, you have to donate your kidney to uh, another family. And in my case, in our case, we had to, I had to make a donation to a family and we traveled to that location. Anyways, long story short, being prepped on the stretcher, um, and I was very nervous, very, very nervous. Um, you know, you, you, you stare at the nurse, you look at the, the doctor, and you're actually thinking, is this the last person I will ever see in my life? Uh, it was scary, but um, I, I'm trying to remember what the nurse told me, but I remember her holding my hand and saying it's going to be okay. So it's just go to sleep. You're in good hands, and you'll wake up uh, a new person, meaning uh, you'll wake up knowing that you did a fantastic thing. And she was absolutely right. You know, I woke up, I, I don't remember, maybe five, six, seven hours later, and it felt great. Listen, I, I wish I could be recording this video and talking about my dad in the present tense. But like I said earlier, my pop is not around anymore. Uh, the surgery was done in 2012. He passed away 2018. He lived an additional six, seven years. Um, do I have any regrets? No. Do I wish I, we would have done something differently? No. We did the best job we could with what we knew at the time. And and honestly, uh, if I was in the same situation today, I'd probably do the exact same thing. Um, I, I feel good. I feel good about myself. This is the best thing I've ever done in my life. And I'm, and I'm, I'm proud of myself. Um, and my son is just turning 12. And he's starting to talk about this story to his friends. He's starting to share this story. Uh, so I, I think, you know, it resonates with a lot of people. Um, I, I think I think he's proud of his dad. Uh, and I didn't do this for the, for the glory. I didn't do it for the publicity. I didn't do it so, um, so I would get free stuff or whatever. But you know what I mean? Uh, I did it because it made me feel good. Um, because family is important in life. And um, having a community spirit sharing and showing love is very important and uh, i hope my son my daughter members of my family see that too it's uh it's all about family sometimes so how did i deal with the stress leading up to the surgery i honestly didn't do anything out of the ordinary uh, in the past or still to this day, I would exercise whenever I was going through difficult times. Whenever I had a, um, that monkey on the back, uh, you're stressed about different things in your life. So I would exercise a little bit more. Um, I would try to share my feelings a little bit more. I am a, a closed person. 
I don't want to bother anybody with uh, my issues. Uh, I guess in that way, I'm very much like my dad, um, very old fashioned. But um, I, I guess looking back, if I can give a little tip, yeah, open up, share, tell people how you're feeling, uh, get that monkey off your back, uh, just let those emotions melt away. Uh, it, 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 it helps. I mean, it won't get rid of all the stress. It won't get rid of everything you're feeling, but um, give it a try. Uh, uh, whether there's a special somebody in your life, a man or a woman, a husband or wife, or, you know, there, there are services out there where you can just talk to people, uh, social workers, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, they're there for that. Um, but exercise, get a bike do a little bit of jogging, or just simply go for a walk. Just breathe in the air and, uh, uh, and deal with those stresses that way. Part of my support system, uh, my immediate family. Uh, my mom, who's still alive today, uh, my wife, uh, son, and daughter, uh, who were very, very young, but um, they were part of, of my support system, as was my brother and my nephews. But, um, you know, when I did all this, my son was maybe a year or two old and my daughter would, had, just been, been, had just been born, you know. And I guess um, I looked at them before doing this, you know. I said, I, you know, I'm doing this because I want to set a good example for my family. And, um, and hopefully they, uh, they take something away from that. Moment after the surgery, <laughs> uh, I remember I was um, I just woken up. I was in the recovery room at Ottawa Hospital, and honestly, it wasn't really a moment. I just opened my eyes, and I and I and I'll always remember this. I opened my eyes, and I remember mumbling to myself, "I'm alive. I'm alive," uh, because you know you have other thoughts before the surgery. You're thinking of everything negative. Uh, you're thinking everything that could go wrong and what will happen if this happens, what will happen if this happens. But I remember it was in the recovery room. The sun was beaming through the windows. Um, and I said, I'm alive. And I was the happiest person in the world. Well, while I was recovering at home, um, I was ready to go, ready to continue with my life, continue with my job. At the time, I was working as a full-time news reporter for a television station in Montreal called Global Television. And I remember my supervisors telling me that, hey, take the time you need, take a month, take two months, whatever you have to do. Uh, I went back to work two and a half weeks later after my surgery. Uh, I think everybody thought I was crazy. Uh, but for me, it was just, let's go. Uh, I, I have a, I guess you could say I have a let's go attitude in many parts of my life. Uh, I, I got back on the horse and I started working again. And uh, I, I'll be honest, I think I just wanted to get back in the normal routine, see my friends again, talk to people and just tell them how I feel and just tell them what I did. Honestly, I was just very proud. Not that, I, not that I was looking for glory again, not that I was looking for any sort of publicity, but I just wanted to tell people, shoot, man, this is, I did something incredible. I did something I'm proud of. You know, like give me 45 seconds of your time and I'll tell you all about it. Um, I guess it's the storyteller in me. I just wanted to tell people that this does exist. There are families in crappy situations who are not blood compatible, but, you know, we can get away, get around it by you know, organizing this uh, exchange program. And I was just so proud. I was just so proud to be uh, one part of the puzzle that helped uh, a group of people. And, um, and I'm still talking about it almost 10 years later. As I mentioned earlier, I, um, after the surgery, I was sort of back to normal about two and a half weeks, three weeks uh later so i was back at work 17 21 days later uh I, there, there was one minor little hiccup i, I did develop a hernia uh, uh, 
a minor thing, in my opinion, uh, around the uh, surgery line. Um, but that was quickly corrected. So I guess that's one of the things that happens to donors. Uh, they develop a, uh, um, a hernia problem, a hernia issue. But uh, uh, again, um, it, it was it, the doctors took very good care of me. They kept a very close eye, and it was routine. This does happen. Uh, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, don't make that uh, mo motivate you to not do the surgery. Uh, uh, the follow-up surgery basically took another hour, and it was fixed. Again, here I am almost 10 years later. I haven't had any issues with that, and um, it, was, it was all good. After donating my kidney, my uh, health has been stable. Honestly, I haven't noticed anything uh, dramatically different. Have I changed my eating habits? No. Am I, uh, do I exercise more to compensate for something else? Or have I been told to um, avoid certain foods or to avoid something? For example, like spicy foods or uh, avoid playing certain sports? Um, the short answer is, well, the only answer is no. I did ask my doctor, hey, should I avoid sports like hockey, um, football, uh, where there's a possibility of somebody, you know, really just uh, crashing into me, possibly causing the, um, the surgery spot to reopen or to cause problems to uh, the, the one remaining kidney. And, uh, and, I, and I think once I even told him, hey, I only got one kidney, should I do anything different? And I remember the doctor saying, well, how many heads do you have? I said, one. Well, there you go. You got one head, but you still do what you have to do. Nothing changes just because you have one head. And I guess that's his uh, cute way of saying, don't worry, just live your life. Be careful, obviously. Don't, don't start jumping out of planes and <laughs> taking additional risks. Uh, but uh, er everything's been fine almost 10 years later. When I uh, share my story, I'm often asked, was it worth it? And in my case, my pop passed away seven years after. Uh, yes. You know, I, I don't even want to stop and think about it. The, the answer is yes. It, it was worth it. It was gratifying. It was uh, fulfilling. Um, I, I won't lie to you. It's not the ending I was hoping for. It's not the ending anybody was hoping for. Uh, my pop passed away in 2018. And it sucks. You know, it, that, that part, I can't find the word. Sucks is not even the word. It's, it's, it's heavy. But um, I, I share my story, and I'm doing this, and I'm ready to answer anybody's questions because I believe in this. Uh, it's the best thing you can ever do. Simply said, you know. It's the best thing you will ever do. It's the, you, should, you shouldn't think twice about it. I mean, if there are health questions, hey, ask your doctor. If there are um, uh, issues with your body and you want to ask somebody, uh, what does your body feel 10 years later, call me. Give me a, you know, look me up. Uh, send me an email. Uh, phone me. And I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Overall, uh, what surprised me the most about this procedure was that it was very simple. And uh, uh, being a donor, I feel, I, I honestly, I, I feel absolutely nothing different. I don't feel like a different person. I don't have to make changes in my life. I don't have to worry about certain things. Uh, that is the most surprising part. I, I would think, you know, that don't do this or don't avoid this or avoid certain medications. Honestly, then nothing. Absolutely nothing. My lifestyle hasn't changed. I, I, I don't have to visit a doctor every six months or every year. I don't. I don't. I mean, if, I, if, I'm, not, if I'm not the person calling, they're not calling you. I, I feel like a normal person. I'm living with one kidney, but I'm fine. I'm 100%. I'm 150%. And, um, and, and, and honestly, the... The feeling you will get, the, the, the fulfillment you will feel, 
the, the happiness you will feel inside you is absolutely rock star fantastic. It feels great. Um, and honestly, when I, when I go through some downs in my life, that thinking about that moment, thinking about what I did, just brings me up. Just brings me up. It's the best thing. It's the best thing you can ever do. Now, looking back, the best part about donating a kidney was was that feeling that you did something good, that feeling that you helped save somebody's life, you helped extend somebody's life. Like, honestly, wh wh when are you ever going to feel that? When? I mean... You can do nice things for people. You can buy nice things for people. You can say nice things to people. But when are you ever going to be in that position where you can save somebody's life, extend somebody's life? Um, nothing beats that. Nothing. And I've said it over and over again, I know. But it's the best feeling in your life, it's the best feeling you will ever uh, you will ever. It's the best story you will ever tell. Uh, I'm so glad I did this. What I discovered about myself during, uh, after this experience was, um, I, I faced a problem head on and I did something about it. You know, I didn't want to live with any sort of regret. You know, we could have been one of those families that said, well, you know, we, sh we could have, but, you know, it's, it wasn't worth the risk. No, I didn't want to have one iota of regret. And honestly, uh, it, it takes a little bit of courage. You're going to have the butterflies in your stomach, but you know what, just face... Face those fears and just do it. You're honestly in good hands. Um, nothing, uh, you know, chances are nothing will, will happen to your body or to your lifestyle after you do this. Just do it. Just do it. And please, whoever's watching this video, uh, you want to ask me more questions about this and that, please uh, don't be shy. Reach out to me. The best advice I can give somebody who is considering being a living donor is uh, feel reassured. Uh, you're in good hands. Doctors know what they're doing. Chances of getting problems are slim and none. Again, I'm a living donor. I did it 10 years ago. Uh, you know, I was in my late 30s when I did it. I'm in my late 40s today. Uh, I, I feel fine. I feel great. My life hasn't changed. I'm not forced to do less of one thing or to do more of another thing. You don't go visit your doctor every two months. It's not, uh, it's not anything to worry about. You can live with one kidney. And if you're a healthy person, honestly, you'll walk out of the recovery room after the surgery and you'll live a normal life. And that's, that's my story. I've lived a normal life for 10 years after the surgery. I feel fine. Uh, I, I have no regrets. And uh, do it. Just do it. You'll feel great. Just do it. It's, you'll, the, the, the happiness you'll feel is, uh, will just, will, will, will just carry on for the rest of your life. Just do it.